from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Oh, my friends, I know that as you pick up the newspaper and you read some of the headlines, you wonder, how in the world can this all happen? Well, Jack is going to be re revealing to us today some of the reasons these things are happening. Number one, U.S. warns of imminent terror threat in Kenya. And we'll talk about Kenya in just a moment. McCain raises prospect of military option in Syria. Why? And Syrians rally saying, Assad is next to die. Well, you know, friends, we want to talk with you on, from our hearts about some of these things that really have moved us. We've seen some news that pertains directly to these headlines you're going to see right now. Anti-Christian violence hit new peak in 2010. Who would have thought that the Christian violence there in Iraq would have risen with our boys being there? The worst to date, it's growing. And also, U.S. warns of imminent terror threat in Kenya as Al-Sabaab promises open war. Well, you know, I have not seen Jack weep very often. When someone sends us a letter or a message, we just praise the Lord so much for it. But the other day, I saw Jack weep over a message that was given to us. And you know, Jack, it was pertaining to Kenya. Yes, What's Rexella, happening there? One of the personalities from Kenya came to America to preach at Mount Hope Church in Lansing. And I call this man my pastor, Dr. Dave Williams. And he was excited as he called me, and I said, what is it? He said, he got up there and asked if the people knew who Jack Van Impey was, and said, I encourage you to support him, because al Sabab has just killed two million Christians over in Sudan. And now, as you saw the headline, they're moving into Kenya, and our people are beginning to die. And the only thing sustaining them, Rexella, he says, this is the voice of Dr. Jack Van Ippie. Man, I cried. I couldn't compose myself. That I'm able to go in there through Daystar and others and get that message in there. And I want you folks to know as you're listening this week, hear me, we are to expect persecution. All who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And we will be persecuted for loving the message of the cross of Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verse 12. And we will be persecuted for the word of God. Listen to this. Revelation 6, 8. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for their testimony. And then in Revelation 20, verse 4, he said, they were beheaded for their testimony concerning Jesus and the word of God, and because they would not receive the mark of the beast or his name or his number, 666. Be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life, Revelation 2.10. And you'll lay those crowns at Jesus' feet. Hang on, hang on. Jesus is coming soon. And when will you lay those crowns at his feet? At his appearing. When he comes, Revelation 4, verses 10 and 11, will lay them at his feet, saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus. Hang on, believer. Mm -hmm. Keep the faith. Oh, Jack, it's going to be quite a day when we stand before the Lord. Some will receive that crown, some will not. But I trust that we all will remain faithful to the Lord no matter what. Now, we have spoken often about a recent uh, event that's happening, and that is a near tripling of American congregations involvement in interfaithism interfaithism if you will take a look here interfaith activities increase among u.s churches now not uh, just a little bit 
but very, very much. In fact, American Houses of Worship have increased their interfaithism outreaches since 9-11, a new survey has found, and it is growing by leaps and bounds. Here you see something, McCain, Warren, Obama. And this, of course, was before the election. Now, a big question that Jack had when he saw that picture was this. I wonder, did he ask the right questions? Did Rick Warren ask the right questions to the two candidates? What do you think there, Jack? I read all the questions, and I say absolutely not. He should have asked both of them, are you born-again Christians? Why? Because Jesus three times said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And that's John 3. And then in verse 7, he says, you must, you must be born again. And yet there's so many within Christendom today that say, oh yes, one of the men said it, McCain. I'm a Christian, but not a born-again kind. There are no other kinds of Christians. What? As many as received Jesus to them gave God power to become sons and daughters, John 1, 12. If you become a son or a daughter, you have a birth physically. And to become a son or daughter demands a birth, and that's receiving Jesus. And when you have a man like our president, who says, I don't need Jesus. There are many ways to get to heaven. You are not born again because 700 times this book says it's the blood that saves through the cross of Jesus on which he died 400 times, and it's the only way of salvation. Now, Rick Seller, he should also have asked them, where do you two men stand on the five fundamentals of the faith? In the early 1900s, a group came into existence called fundamentalism. Not terroristic groups. Christians who said, if you believe these five points, you are our brother and sister in Christ, regardless of your denominational tag. I just had a Roman Catholic priest write me and say, I love your show, Dr. Manipi, and how it blesses my heart as you take a stand on the five fundamentals of the faith, which I accept as well and can say amen when you preach it. What are they? Number one, and remember, this was all Christianity just 100 years ago. You can't find it much anymore. First of all, Christ is the eternal God. He didn't begin as a babe at Bethlehem's manger. He is the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, 8. But wait a minute. He existed then? Yes. But he was to be born in Bethlehem, Micah 5, 2. And that one, to be born, was from all all from everlasting, for he's the eternal God, second member of the Trinity. Christ is God, yes. Christ came who is over all God. Blessed forever, Romans 9, 5. Great is the mystery of Godliness, that God was manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. Secondly, he was to be born of a virgin. And this was not through sex. Mary said, how shall this be when the angel said, you're going to have a child? I know not a man. And the angel said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Luke 1, verses 34 and 35. Thirdly, his substitutionary atonement on the cross through the shedding of blood. No other way. What? I mean when I say 400 times this book says Jesus is the way. Jesus said it about himself. If it weren't true, he'd be a deceiver. What did Jesus say? John 8, 24, you die in your sins if you believe not on me. Boy, that's conclusive. I am the door. By me, if any man enter, and he shall be saved. But what did he say about being the door in verse 1? He says, if any man tries to climb in any other way except the door, he's a thief and a robber. No thief can get to heaven, 1 Corinthians 6, 10. Oh, that precious Jesus died for us on the cross. That's the gospel. Go into all the world and preach the gospel every creature, Mark 16, 15. What is that gospel? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, one I declare unto you the gospel, and here it is, that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 
Imagine, I can produce 400 salvation texts that Jesus is the only way and 700 that it's the blood under Christ who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Revelation 1, 5. Oh, Rex, I love Revelation 5, verses 9 and 10. They've been raptured in chapter 4, verse 1, and the crowd is singing about coming back. These are the believers who were raptured. Listen to them. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take the book and to open the seals, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and hast made us under our God's kings and priests, and we shall reign with you on the earth. And of course, you just heard about the resurrection, which was number four, but they're going to reign with him on the earth because Jesus is coming back, not only to rapture, but seven years later to set up his glorious kingdom on earth. And that's why Gabriel also said when he was telling Mary that she was going to produce this God, man. Listen to it. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And he shall sit upon the throne of his father David in Jerusalem, and he shall reign over the house of Israel forever and forever and forever. And of his kingdom, there'll be no end. And that kingdom is about to come, and you've prayed it for centuries. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6, 10. Oh, Jack, that was really That's great. what they should have been asked. That's what they should have been asked, absolutely, in the Word of God. I, I, I love it. I say it all the time. I love it. That's not Jack speaking. That's God speaking because he's quoting God's Word, the Bible. Look to the Bible, friends, in this day and age in which we live. Now, he referred a moment ago to um, Mega Pastor Rick Warren giving the questions, of course, uh, to McCain and Obama. Let's take a look at this, Mega Pastor Rick Warren's Damascus Road experience. Whoa. Mega Pastor Rick Warren blasts Iraq war and praises Syria. Going on, McCain raises prospect of military option in Syria. Now, that's not so good towards Syria. There's a different opinion there. Cable say Syria. Iran illegally moved cash to North Korea. Never heard about that here in the United States. Oh, my, oh, my. He was so brutal. Eccentric and brutal, he met his end as a fugitive. Gaddafi. Oh, yes, we'll never forget him. And then Syrians rally saying, Assad is next. He's going to meet his end also. I want to back up here and ask Jack a question about that Damascus Road experience. What's that all about, Jack? What does that mean? Well, the Apostle Paul was saved on the Damascus Turnpike. There appeared a light from heaven, and he had been killing Christians. And the voice said, Saul, why do you persecute me? He said, who are you? I am Jesus. And he found Christ and was converted, and his sins were forgiven, and he became the greatest apostle, writing 14 books of this holy Bible. What a forgiving God even after Saul of Tarsus murdered Christians. Now, this man, Rick Warren, went to Syria, and he blasted the United States of America, saying we were wrong to have our troops in Iraq, even though they were dying and bleeding and giving everything they had to save those people. And many of our American boys are gone now because of it. But he was against it, and he got on the radio stations and television of the Arabs and the Muslims and condemned America. When Jane Fonda did it, we never forgave her. Are we going to forgive this man? Why do I say it? Because 60,000 ministers in America are following the teachings of Rick Warren and much of it is against the word of God. This is the man who says, don't ever mention sin. It's mentioned 614 times. Don't you ever say saved or lost. That offends people. Call them church or unchurched. Oh, isn't that something? They said, don't ever give an invitation. Who could give an invitation after preaching something that isn't right according to the Bible? At the inauguration of the President of the United States of America, Obama, this man, Rick Warren, prayed in the name of Isa. That is the prophet Jesus of Islam who comes back and denies that he was ever a Christian and poo-poos everything, smashes the cross, and is going to put Jews and Christians to death who won't become Muslims. And that's why he is so favored to speak at two conferences of the Islamic faith of America. 
God forgive me, and you preachers are following them. Mm, well, they are not teaching the Jesus of the Bible. We believe in the Jesus of the Bible, don't we? He's our Savior, and he's the one that we're going to ask you to open your heart to in just a moment. But first,